Welcome again. Um, I would like to hand over the floor to Professor Tony Hall, Community Director of the Globalization Studies Program at the University of Lethbridge, and he will introduce both himself as well as our speakers here today. So thank you very much. And just uh, before, I'd like to apologize in advance. I do need to leave a bit early. I have a choir. So we have a show this week, so I can't miss it. But anyway, thank you for coming. Here we are at the University of Calgary. It was not that long ago that Ann Coulter was speaking here and uh, generated a lot of attention. Uh, and I think the uh, individuals to my right here uh, really outdo Ann Coulter dramatically in terms of their history. They in our world history, the history of our times. And, uh, I'm Anthony J. Hall, Tony Hall. In 2003, I founded uh, Globalization Studies at the University of Lethbridge. And uh, so I would like to say that that unit is one of the hosts here, uh, collaborating with the Peace Consortium at the University of Calgary. And it's very great uh, to meet the people in the Peace Consortium and get uh, more and more opportunity to collaborate and work together. Uh, as I saw it, the decision of the former U.S. President George W. Bush to make Calgary the scene of his first speech, his first public address following his presidency, that this in my view was one of the biggest historical moments in Calgary's history. And I don't think it was a particularly flattering moment uh, that George W. Bush would choose this city, not surprisingly so, however, because I do tend to view this city as essentially a colony of uh, an economic, commercial colony of Houston and Dallas. But it's also, interestingly, the political base, the main political base of the minority government of Canada. This is the political base from which Stephen Harper a fellow Torontonian, but he, he casts himself as an Albertan. I'm a Torontonian originally. I've been at Lethbridge since, since 1990. But in any case, this is the political base of the so-called Conservative Party. And, and it had great significance that uh, I think it put law enforcement officials in a situation where they had a choice between enforcing the rule of law, enforcing the uh, Immigration and Refugees Act, the Canadian War Crimes and Crimes Against Humanities Act, or following the orders of their political masters. And when you have law enforcement agencies uh, carrying out political agendas and not enforcing the law, you don't really have a rule of law. So I'm, I'm proud to introduce my colleague, my friend, my associate, uh, splitting the sky, Dr. Juia. John Boncourt, John Hill. I'm proud to be standing in the presence of his family. Um, Sharon and uh, Che and uh, Dylan and Rainbow. I've been speaking to these young people on the phone or over the years. Sandra. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. Please forgive me. Uh, nerves and whatnot. <clears throat> so uh, having said that, uh, this is a, a hugely significant moment. Uh, splitting the sky, phoned me two months before George Bush was coming into town to say we have to do something. And it was obvious we have to do something. It wasn't uh, an issue that I would have chosen out of the blue. It was an issue delivered on us and delivered on Calgary. And we responded. And many of, uh, of the people in this room responded, uh, I think, very appropriately. And uh, I wrote a paper, uh, an academic paper, which I delivered in Winnipeg two weeks before, Splitting the Sky, prepared in his way. And we developed as best we could the case that our protest was to identify the responsibilities of Canadian law enforcement agencies to uphold the law. And if they weren't going to do it, we were going to dar darn well make sure that, that it, a, a spotlight was pointed on the fact that the rule of not law is not being enforced. And it was dramatized in a way that I didn't fully appreciate how 
astute and skillful it had been done when splitting the sky confronted the police line and either was pulled through or broke through the police line and in a sense has given our issue of George Bush's criminality, the cabal around him, their criminality, it's given us a process. And I would have to say that in the world right now, this is the deepest any group has got into developing an actual process to, to uh, deal with law enforcement agencies, courts, and their responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis the obvious, well-documented, uh, momentously documented criminality of George Bush, Richard Cheney, you know, Abu Ghraib, torture, legal renditions, uh, Bagram, <clears throat> Uh, you, you say these words and they're part of our language, and we just know what they are. And if that level of criminality can be sustained, that level of organized crime, and our law enforcement agencies criminalize those who try to identify that problem and that issue, while protecting the credibly accused war criminals, as Gail Davidson, Lawyers Against War, myself, others who work in the academy, work in the legal profession, have tried to develop these these arguments. So, splitting the sky, I met in uh, shortly following the Indian War, Gustafson Lake, in 1995. And one of the things we were discussing in the car was the cover up around Attica and the reality that 43 people were killed in 1971 in the Attica, Attica prison event, and one person was charged, a 19 year old, just turned 19. Nobody in that court, in that jail, was supposed to be under 21. But the one person charged was John Boncor, John Hill, who later got the name Dakajawea, splitting the sky. And uh, he has spent 16 years of his life in prison as a result of what happened that day, and was going to live out his life, and probably a short life it would have been. And then Ramsey Clark took over splitting this guy's case. And since I've known him since 1995, he tells me many good stories, really redeeming, wonderful stories. And, and, and so here is Ramsey Clark today. Uh, Ramsey is coming in as Cynthia McKinney, former U.S. Congresswoman in, in, in the United States, a, a, a really heroic figure, uh, came in uh, the, during the trial itself. So we have had major uh, interventions by major international people here in Calgary. And I have to say it was covered up the day of March 17th. I have done uh, interventions with the Ombudsman of the CBC, Vince Carlin, to point out that uh, uh, they're misrepresenting. Uh, they're not giving news, they're giving propaganda, and we see that so often. So I'm proud to say that we are youth streaming this to a global audience. Uh, it was announced in London, so we are not alone in this room. We have an international presence in this room, and we will continue to do everything in our power to point out in Calgary that we're dealing with a huge responsibility here, a huge international story, and however much it's covered up here in Alberta, it only goes to show the the lack of ethics, of professionalism, of, of mainstream media. Uh, and, and, and nevertheless, uh, there are good people working in all fields, in the police. Uh, we, you know, we reach out to people in the CIA, in the, in the deep government, people who have responsibility, blood on their hands, but have to live their lives. And, and we call for people to come forward and, and, and help develop the case uh, that needs to, de to be developed for humanity of the criminality that we're dealing with, the level of organized crime. And one process we propose is an articulation of the Calgary Principles, which I might talk about later. So Splitting the Sky is, speaks in my class often. I saw Hurricane Carter speak at my university once, and I thought, well, he's a pretty good speaker, but not as good a speaker as Doc. And his story isn't frankly as interesting, I don't think. Uh, it's, it's an amazing story, uh, going back uh, from before Attica, and, and it speaks to the reality that the way law is enforced